tutorial I want to introduce you to the redesigned three-way color corrector and in the next tutorial I want to look at secondary color correction using the three-way color corrector. Now we've got a problem with this shot in that this teapot is a little bit oversaturated, it's too bright for what we want to do. There's a couple of bits and pieces that are going to take us on the vector scope beyond where we think is safe. So what we need to be able to do is go in and just change those items and we're going to be able to do that with a three-way color corrector. But before we do that, let's apply the three-way color corrector and have a look and see how it works. So my footage is selected. I can go to my effects panel and make sure I've typed the word three or near enough. And then under video effects, color correction, there's the three-way color corrector. Double click it, it's applied. I need to go back to my effects controls to find it. Now at the moment, I've got a fast color corrector open. Shut that and you'll see underneath the three-way color corrector. Now the three-way color corrector is going to look at three different types of pixels inside this shot. It's going to be looking at highlight pixels, which are the sort of the bright highlights. It's going to be looking at shadow pixels, which are definitely the shadows, and the mid-tone pixels. And it's going to allow me to change the color of them independently to each other. So I could, if I wanted to, I could take the highlights towards the blues and I could take the shadows towards the reds. Now, you can go from output to luma range to try and get a feel for what they're going to be like. It's not really going to give you a brilliant idea. So my suggestion, if you want to know what pixels are going to be affected, is actually just to play with these three color wheels because very thoughtfully Adobe have given us resets for individual color wheels. Now, before I play with the color wheels, I'll just show you this. Say this is the shadow color wheel. Down here it says shadows, and if you open that up, you've got exactly the same that we had in the fast color corrector. You've got the hue angle, which is this outer wheel. You've got the balance magnitude, which is this point in the middle where you're pulling it out. You've got the balance angle, which is where it is on the circle. It's gone. And then the last one, which is the balance gain, is this little bar in the middle, which we can pull up to give more or less changing color. And I love the feedback now. As I pull that out, you can see the feeding back here showing us how saturated and gainful those colors are going to be. But you can see now, by pulling out this master on the shadows, I can see where the shadow pixels are. These are the shadow pixels. And you can clearly see that they've all been selected. I want to undo that. I know where they are now, so I can just undo them. And now I can do it with the midtones. So if I pull the midtones towards the greens, for instance and I let go and wait for a moment, these you can see that the majority of these pixels are mid-tones. So I can reset that and then for highlights let's take those over here towards the magenta, pull those all out and let go and you can see actually there's not an awful lot of highlights. There's a fair few but not tons. So we can see that the majority of the pixels are mid-tones and I can reset that wheel. Now I can if I want to use figures I can do it with mid-tones, shadows and highlights down here Plus, there is the option to move them all together as one. Now you've got, again, you've got the option down here to be able to play around with the items as one. Or alternatively, if you'd rather use the wheels, you can click this master and that locks these wheels together. So that when I move this point, all of them will move together. And I can pull them all around and no matter what I do, they'll all be affected equally. And then you reset one and you reset them all. Or alternatively, if you want to move them all together, you can play here with the master controls. Okay, so I'm just going to shut those down. So we've got shadows, midtones, highlights, and masters refer to these wheels. These pickers down here do not refer to what's directly above them, but they refer to the input levels which we dealt with in the previous tutorial. So that's input shadows, input midtones, input highlights. And again, you'd be trying to look for a highlight and a shadow and a mid-tone. Or alternatively, just pulling these through to create contrast change, make a shot brighter or make a shot darker. Whatever you want to achieve with these particular sliders. And I'm going to take that back to one. Okay, so you've seen these before. Tonal range here, tonal range definition. So you can show tonal range. And when you click show tonal range, you actually see a feedback of where the highlights, the shadows and the midtones are. Highlights are white, midtones are grey and shadows are black. So you've got a really good feedback for what's going on there, but you can still play with those. So you've got shadow threshold, so you can pull the shadow threshold up. You can say more things need to be shadows, or less things need to be shadows. 
So if I want more pixels included in shadows, I can just pull that shadow range up and I've got more items that will be changed when I play with this wheel. And again, I can do that with the midtones. I can say more things are taken from the highlights, if you like, into my midtones or pull it the other way. So you can now see that at the moment I've got virtually no grey pixels whatsoever. And you can see that actually reflected up here. I pull that back. And you can do the same with your highlights. You can play around with what's included or excluded. Alternatively, you can actually play with the range here. And playing with the range up here decides how much is involved in which section. And we can decide which is going to be our shadows, our midtones, and our highlights. And this ability to control what is midtones, highlights, and shadows really gives you an awful lot more power to be able to just change what you want to change. So you don't just have to live with the fact that that's shadows or that's midtones and you can't change them. You can actually say, well, actually, I want more shadows in there, in which case you can just move the sliders around either here or down here to increase or decrease the amount that is midtones or the amount that is shadows and same with midtones and highlights. And I might therefore want an awful lot more or an awful lot less in my highlights if I want as well. So it's up to you to play around and decide exactly what you want or how you want things to be affected. I'm just going to turn off the show tonal range and I'm going to shut down the show tonal range there. Obviously we have saturation can open up the saturation you've got the master saturation which will desaturate everything or increase everything so at the moment it's 100% but notice if you drop down saturation it's a two-way thing so take saturation to zero and it's going to be a grayscale image or you can take it all the way up to 200% and they're going to be massively overblown so it is a two-way item and take that back to 100 and then you've also you can do it for shadows midtones and highlights so for instance if we believe this teapot was in the midtones we could open up the midtones and we could look at desaturating the midtones generally and we might find that we've dealt with a problem now yeah, kind of a bit but i think secondary color correction is going to be a lot better for us than this particular one okay so you can play around with the saturations for the different bits and pieces you could also blow them out if you like that's not going to be the best solution for what we're going to want to do a bit later on. Okay, so that's the majority of the controls. We've obviously got secondary color correction options here, and we also have auto levels, which we also had in the fast color corrector, which is auto black, auto contrast, auto white levels. I personally don't like using those. I'd rather go in and select the items that I believe are going to be blacks, midtones, and highlights, and actually physically move these sliders and play around with them to get the look I'm looking for. But if you want to play with the auto controls, they're there. In the next tutorial, we're going to be looking at secondary color correction to create a mask to reduce the brightness of this red, and believe it or not, this red, and perhaps this red too.